Vic, here we are at UCLA 40, 50 years after you got your doctorate in physics and I got my doctorate in brain research at the same place. And I wouldn't have thought it back then that science and theology are really hot topics in the 21st century. How do you reflect on that phenomenon? Well, I think the, uh, the topic has always been <laughs> of, of, of great interest. And as the, you, as, as the world has become uh, more and more technological, uh, science has had a, a, a greater role to uh, play and is, is piece by piece been able to address a lot of the issues that, that theology uh, has previously reserved for itself. Uh, such as the origin of the universe and the complexity of life and, uh, and so on. These would be reasons why the topic might uh, become less interesting because science was giving all the explanations, but we're finding that as science has explained more, which I agree with you, that the topic has become hotter and the uh, religious interest in this subject has become stronger. Yes, I think that it's, it's another issue as to why we still have religion after after all these centuries of science. It's kind of uh, an, another uh, a question that uh, I don't particularly <laughs> care to get into it because that's the way people think, and uh, you're, you're you know more about that as a as a brain scientist. Uh, uh, How do you see the, do, the, the different methodologies between science and religion? Yeah, well, you see, I think that's the difference, that uh, the theology has, has always been based on the assumption that God exists, and then we try to come up with uh, a, a logically consistent story. And I, I respect that attempt. I mean, I think the people who have been doing theology right from the beginning have been trying to grip, come to grips with, with, uh, uh, with the... A phenomenon that really defies a lot, a lot of uh, common sense and, and so on. So they they've tried to tackle those questions right from the beginning. And right now you do have uh, two groups of of theologians. Some are very interested in, in trying to uh, disparage science and to say that well science isn't everything and and science uh, uh, can't answer everything and so on. But then there's another group uh, of uh, Theologians, I, I call them the premise keepers, who uh, uh, are honestly trying to describe uh, uh, God that's consi- on the one hand consistent with, with traditional teachings, and on the other hand consistent with with science. And uh, they've come up with a number of possible scenarios by which. Uh, God could have created the universe as we know it, still used evolution, for example, not stepped in, uh, but allowed everything to just uh, take uh, care of itself. Because after all, I mean, I agree that if God could create the universe, if there is a God who created the universe, he could have done it any way he wanted. I mean, and this is maybe the way he did it. This is what they're saying. This is the way God happened to to, uh, uh, create the universe. He created the universe to have these 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 natural laws. Why would why would he have to violate natural laws if he, he created them in the first place? And uh, uh, same thing with evolution. Why would he have to step in uh, and, uh, and poke his finger into the natural process of evolution if he created the natural process in the first place? And so that all makes good sense. The trouble is they then run into the the conflict, the confusion with uh, traditional teachings that the great bulk of people still believe. For example, the notion that uh, humanity is special. Uh, The uh, uh, story of evolution is is that humans uh, came into existence by by accident. Uh, And uh, if a different uh, a glitch had happened, uh, a different mutation had happened any place along the way, we would have, we would not have e- evolved the way we had. And their answer is that, well, God just uh, had chosen to do it that way. Humans aren't special, they're just one particular way that God's ends are achieved. 
And, uh, and that does work. You, know, you can imagine such a God. I don't see, again, I don't see any need for such a God. There's no evidence for such a God. Uh, but such a God would work. The trouble is it's a God that's quite at odds with uh, what most people uh, think of as God. So you're saying their arguments are internally consistent, they're consistent with science, but maybe fail to achieve what, uh, what even they might want, or certainly the vast number of people who believe in those theologies would want. Yeah, it's hard to see uh, people rushing off to worship uh, uh, a god that, uh, an evolution, <laughs> evolutionary god, or, or, or a god who... Uh, just works with natural phenomena. It is certainly explains why we get disasters, for example, natural disasters. You wonder how a God that really is a good God, that really has the interests of humanity in, in mind, would allow so much uh, destruction year after year. Uh, well, uh, this kind of God would do it. This kind of, Certainly praying to such a God is going to do you any good. He's not, you're not going to, not going to change his mind about it. And uh, if that's the kind of God you want to worship, uh, uh, fine. I don't see people rushing off to the, the new church of, of naturalism. There are, there are, there, there are <laughs> such churches, on naturalistic on churches. A, on any subject you want to put, any view, there'll be a religious organization that sure, will espouse it. Sure, because that's a good way to, to get a tax break. <laughs> what um, uh, what do you think about the dialogue between science and theology, or the debate, or some people, or constructive dialogue? Is, it, is this a useful thing? Sure, but I think the the problem I've had from the beginning when I've tried to do this dialogue is they refuse to theologians refuse to consider the existence question, the God existence question. They always want to start from the assumption that God exists and then work from there. And I want to go back and say, well, let's argue about whether God exists. That's the fundamental question. And um, they're very reluctant uh, to uh, even in, indulge in that anymore because I think they know that all the arguments for the existence of God that have been raised over the years uh, fail. They're well aware of that. They've studied them at, in school and, uh, and they haven't... You know, a couple of, occasionally they come up with new ones. There are some modern theologians who come up with new arguments. Uh, what they, for the most part, do is come up with probability arguments. God is a is a more probable uh, uh, hypothesis than than no God. But that's the best they can do. They can no no longer really provide any. Uh, any strong case. So These arguments God. like inference to the best explanation, yes. the probabilistic yes. ones, and what do you make of those arguments? Well, there that's the best we could do on both sides. When I say, uh, in my book uh, subtitle, I say uh, how science shows that God does not exist. I don't say how science proves that God does not exist, because the word proof usually infers some kind of certainty. Uh, although in, in science we do use proof the way it's used in a law court, namely uh, proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So uh, we do use it that way, but we don't use it the way you use it in mathematics or logic as, as, sure. as certainty. So, uh, so that's all you can do on either side, I think, is to, is to argue uh, probabilistically uh, which is the best argument, which is the best explanation of the various phenomena. Now, I've I claim I've, I've I've looked at these and and that I come to the conclusion that that the probability of God uh, is is not zero but very low. How do you see the different methodologies of science and theology uh, compared and contrasted? Well, th theology starts with the assumption that there is a God, and then proceeds from there to try to make a a, a logical case for that by looking at all the arguments and and um, trying to see how they can be made consistent with traditional teachings of of the churches and so on. Whereas science uh, starts with no particular assumption other than the the belief that uh, that the best way we learn about things is by observing them and and uh, making models to explain observations and and testing those models. Uh, and uh, always allowing for the possibility that you're wrong, 
that you have to change your theories, change your models, and, and always, first of all and foremost, letting the data uh, decide.